Hello, people. Good evening. Good evening, teacher. Good evening, teacher. How was your day? Was it good? Was it busy? Was it tiring? Was Hello, it teacher. fantastic? How was your day? Very, very fantastic. It was fantastic. Really? Why? Tell me. I want to know. Uh, it's a young play for my uh, uncle. No, 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 my do daughter. You're mm, playing. Con hija. Ah, you were playing with your daughter. Playing with your daughter. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay, Bravo. Well, people, good evening. Welcome to the class. Uh, it's good to see you. Elise, it's on the bus. <laughs> okay, thank you for, for telling me. Well, let me show you the, the topic for this class. Today we have quantifiers and review of the present continuous, okay? So uh, we're going to learn what quantifiers are, we are going to practice, and also we have a review of the present continuous. So this is class number 12. What day is today? Today is? Today is Tuesday. Tuesday. <coughs> February 7. February 7. Yes, Tuesday, February 7th. That's correct. Okay, in this lesson, participants will be exposed to quantifiers and their meanings. We have review of previous class. We have what are they doing? And let's practice with quantifiers. Those are the activities I prepare for you and I need to take attendance in this moment. Alejandro Cartagena, Ana Elizabeth Garcia, Andrea Sánchez Aguilar, Betania López, Braulio Velázquez, Present. Carlos Martínez, Claudia María García, Present teacher. Thank you, Claudia. Claudia Yesenia Ebura. Christopher Raúl Peña Montano. Hi, teacher. I'm here. Okay, that's good. Damaris Isabel Castellano. Present teacher. Okay. Denise Gutierrez Martínez. Doribel Arelia Riaza. Present teacher. Hey, Doribel, you got on time. Eli Sandoval. Emmanuel Portales Hernández. Eneida Verónica Ramírez. Present teacher. Thank you, Eneida. Eric Daniel Herrera Sosa. Fernando Arturo Mendoza. I'm here, teacher. Okay, Fernando. Eh, Irma Adriana Segura. Present teacher. Thank you, Irma. Irma Zuleima Grande de Cuellar. Present teacher. Eh, Jacqueline Rebeca Cermeño. Present teacher. Janet Rosibel. Present teacher. Thank you, Janet. Jennifer Marisol Iraeta de Torres. Present Teacher. Jennifer. Jessica Susana Manchang. Present teacher. Thank you, Jesse. Jimmy Ramos. Good. Thank you then for connecting to the class on time. Well, as I told you, in this class, we are going to review the topic that we studied yesterday. Do you remember what the topic was?
It was a new topic. Do you remember? Mm, yes, teacher. Uh -huh. The use of the apostrophe. Exactly. We studied the family and also the apostrophe for possession. So we have here a picture. We have some pictures of people that are famous, famous people, and they are also um, they are also family, right? They are related. So can you tell me what is the relation between Michael Douglas and Catherine Sirayans? I have the example. Michael is Catherine's husband. Cherry gemelos, ¿cómo se dice? Ah, twins. Twins, C W I N S, twins. I Sorry. I... Independientemente del género. Yes, doesn't matter. Twins. Okay. So can you tell me what is the relation between Enrique Iglesias and Julio Iglesias? ¿Cómo lo dirían así en una oración como Michael is Catherine's husband and using the apostrophe for possession? How would you use it? Iglesias is Julio Iglesias son. Vamos a ver. Enrique is Julio. Son, right? Enrique is Julio's son. And Julio is Enrique's father. Enrique's father. That's right. Okay. What about these two boys? Do you know them? Vicente Fernandez. Vicente? Mm -hmm. Is Alejandro. Alejandro. <laughs> okay, Alejandro, yes. So Alejandro is Vicente. Okay, Alejandro is Chente. <laughs> Just kidding, it's Vicente. <laughs> and Vicente is Alejandro's Alejandro father. father. Exactly. Yeah. Alejandro's father. Okay. And what about Ashley and Kate? Sister. Aha. Uh -huh. We can say Ashley. Is Kate Kate's sister. Kate's sister. Do you know other famous people who are related? Mm -hmm. You don't remember? What about, um, let's see, Angelina and Brad Pitt? Angelina is Brad. Brad. Aria. Wife. Angelina is Brad's ex. Wow. Wife. <laughs> yes, Angelina is Brad's. Ex-wife. Mm -hmm. They are not married anymore. Mm -hmm. What is the relation between Rocio and Jacqueline Rebecca? Hola. 
partner. Rocio is Jacqueline's classmate. 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 Am I a classmate? Friend. Rocio is Jacqueline. Uh-huh, Rocio is Jacqueline's. What is my relation? My relation is Jacqueline. Ah, uh, yes, Jacqueline's t-shirt. Exactly. Sure. <laughs> Rocio is Jacqueline's teacher. Mm -hmm. And Jacqueline is Rocio's student. Student. That's right. Okay. <laughs> very nice. Very nice. Thank you. Do you have any other examples? Teacher, uh, Ronaldinho is Messi's friends. <laughs> Ronaldinho o Ronaldo? Yes. Ronaldinho. Ah, is Messi's friend. I didn't know. Ronaldinho is Messi's friend. Okay. I have another one. Clara is Piqué's. Uh -huh. mm, girlfriend. Uh -huh. New girlfriend, right? Or Piqué's lover. <laughs> Amante. Clara is Piqué's lover. <laughs> okay. Eso significa amante, lover. Yes. I mean, the new lover. Lover. Is a lover. It can have a, a positive. It can have a positive meaning. Braulio is Fernando's. Classmate. Exactly. Very nice example, Jimmy. Braulio is Fernando's classmate. Good. So thank you. Thank you for the examples. I, I really like your examples. <laughs> okay. I can see that you can use the possessive for, or the apostrophe for possession. Okay, let's go over the next slide. In the next slide, we have a picture. And the, the question is, what are they doing? There is a family in the living room. There is a family in the living room. We have Cindy, Eva, Baby Ben, Dad, Grandma Sue, and yourself. Can you please write a description of what they are doing? What are they doing? Can you tell me? What are they doing? What is a dad doing? Y en este caso vamos that, a usar el presente continuous. Uh -huh. that, that is. Drink coffee. Drinking coffee. Is he drinking or preparing? Preparing no, no, coffee. Yes, preparing. Ah. Okay, that is preparing coffee okay that is preparing coffee oh dear mm -hmm. any other one grandma sue is drinking coffee okay grandma sue is drinking coffee okay <laughs> With bread, with a the baby, baby is playing. Baby okay, baby Ben is playing with. What is he playing with? Uh 
baby man is playing with a with a ball. Okay. What about Ivan? What is Ivan doing? Eva is reading. Okay, Eva is reading. Okay. Reading. He is reading a book or a magazine. Eva is reading magazine. a magazine. Uh huh. And Cindy? Uh, Greeting is a table. Cindy is writing. Is, is, is okay, let's say Cindy is writing a report. Could or, be. Uh, homework. Or she's doing homework. And what about you, Sal, the dog? Joseph is sleeping. Sleeping. <laughs> sleeping, relaxed. <laughs> it's relaxing, right? Usually it's relaxing on the carpet. Or using it in sleeping on the carpet. Very nice. Excellent. <laughs> Good job. So you can remember the present continuous. We have the subject, the verb to be, and the verb in the ing form. Verb in the ing form. And complement. Mm -hmm. Very nice. So subject, are... subject plus verb to be plus. Uh -huh, we have subject plus the verb be plus the verb in the ing form plus the complement. Okay, in the affirmative form. Now, can we make other exam this examples of this family in the negative form? In the negative form? Subject. Mm -hmm. Subject. Mm -hmm. Verb B. Plus not. Plus the verb in the ing plus the complement. Can you give me examples? For example, we can say that that is not cooking. He is just preparing tea is not cooking in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. Another example. That is not cooking. Cindy, in the Cindy is not drinking in the coffee. Is not drinking coffee, okay? Cindy is not drinking coffee. <laughs> Baby Ben, not sleeping. Can you repeat, please? Baby Ben. Baby Ben is not sleeping. Is not sleeping. <laughs> it's not sleeping. He's very alive, <laughs> very awake. Uh -huh. Grandma Sue, Grandma isn't or is not. Kind of cleaning. Is not. Any. Kind of. Is not cleaning. Yeah. Okay. Is because I, I it was like entrecortado. I, I couldn't hear that. It was interrupted. Grandma Sue is in cleaning. Okay. And you fell.
playing. Uh -huh. You said, or maybe you said it's not running in the in the garden, right? <laughs> Yusel is not running in the garden. He is sleeping. I wish I could be Yusel in this moment. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, excellent. So this is affirmative and negative forms of the present continuous or present progressive. Now, how can we make questions in the present continuous? To make questions, we use the verb be plus the subject plus the verb in the ing form plus the complement, if it's necessary. We're gonna make some examples. Miren este ejemplo. Is, is that is that using the computer? Is that using the computer? Yes, the verb be. That is the subject. Using is the verb in the ing form and the complement is the computer. Is that using the computer? What is the answer? You can say yes, he is, or in the negative, no, he isn't. No, he isn't. Okay. Ahora hagamos otras preguntas. Is, is, baby, is baby Ben crying? Okay. Is baby. Is baby Ben crying? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Is baby Ben crying? No, he is not. No, yes, he... no he he's isn't. not or no, he isn't. Okay, another question. Vamos a hacer una en plural. Are Ivan and Cindy? Watching TV? Okay. Are Ivan and Cindy watching TV? No, they aren't. Exactly. No, they aren't. Or oh, they are not. Oh, no, they are not. Excellent, Jimmy. Mm -hmm. Another question. Are you sleep? No. Are you falling asleep? In this moment? No, I'm not. No, I'm not. <laughs> oh, that's nice. <laughs> it means that I'm not making you sleep. <laughs> okay. Another question. Are you eating dinner right now? Are you eating dinner right now? No, I'm not. No, I'm, I'm drinking not. coffee. Oh, you're drinking coffee. I wish I could have a cup of coffee. <laughs> okay. Thank you, people. So this is the, the structure for the questions. Do you have any questions about the questions? Mm -hmm. No? Any questions? What about WH questions? It's the same, the same structure. The only difference is that we add the WH question at the beginning. For example, what are dad and grandma drinking? What are they drinking? Maybe coffee or tea. Okay, let's say tea. They're drinking tea. They're, or they are, 
drinking tea. Okay, another question. Where is you sell sleeping? Where is you sell sleeping? On the sofa? Oh, no. No? Usually it's sleeping. Where? In the floor? In On the, in the bed. Carpet? Mm -hmm. On the carpet. In the alfombra, on the carpet. Okay. <laughs> Good. Another question. Who is uh, reading a magazine? Even. Even is reading a magazine. Mm -hmm. Another question. Another question? Why is Cindy doing a report? What is Cindy doing a report? Why? Por qué? Because it's a homework. <laughs> because it is a homework. It is homework. Okay. Great. Right. <laughs> Thank you for your examples, people. Excellent. So this is a review of the present continuous. So now you are expert. <laughs> do you want to take a picture or a screenshot? You can do it before I erase. Five, four, three, two, and one. <laughs> now let's go over the next slide. In the next slide, we are going to learn about quantifiers. Quantifiers are words that refer to quantity. They give you or they express a quantity. They are used usually used with nouns, and they can be used with countable or uncountable nouns. Okay, what is the difference between countable and uncountable nouns? Can you give me some examples of the difference? What's the difference? Oh, los que se pueden contar y los que son incontables? Uh -huh, yes, and what is the difference? Or give me example. Por ejemplo, la leche y el dinero. El dinero lo podemos pensar, pero la leche no. Bueno, sí la podríamos pesar o medir, pero no contar. Ajá, ok. The countable nouns are the ones in which we can give a number. One, sí. two, three, four, sí. five. For example, sí. over here in the picture, let's count the books. One. We have, uh, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 17. No, 16, 17. 17 books. I can count the books, right? Those are countable. I can count the cell phones. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 cell phones. I can count the people. For example, in this class, we have 18 people. There are 18 students connected today. We can count the tortillas, three tortillas for one quarter, or we can count the pupusas, we can count the bananas, we can Apple. Count... Sorry? Apple, manzana. Apple. Son apple. Apple. Uh, sorry. Apple. apple. Yes, we can count the apples. But there are things that we cannot give a number before. For example, water. We cannot say three waters, four waters, five waters. We, it's not possible. 
okay? Or we cannot say monies. For example, five monies. Give me five monies. No, right? Cinco dineros. We don't say that. We say give me five dollars, but we don't say monies, right? It's just money in general. In general. Uh, or time. The time in general. We can count the minutes, the hours, but not the time in general. Uh, we cannot count all the liquids, milk, coffee, juice, okay? Also the sugar, la azúcar, sugar, salt, the flour, harina. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. Manuel is asking a question. How many? How many pages <laughs> are in those books? I don't know, but in this big book, this dictionary, maybe encyclopedia, thousands of pages. <laughs> Good. So let's look at. Oh, sorry, guys. Let's look at some examples with the quantifiers. Okay. I need two volunteers to read the countable and another volunteer to read the uncountable example. Teacher, I can. Okay, Christopher, you read the countable and who reads the uncountable? Me. Jimmy, okay. So let's start with Christopher. Okay, let's start. Countable. Quantifiers with countable nouns. I want to all the apples. Can I have every ball? Who has the most pens? I don't have many pens. I have some pens. I have a few coins. I don't have any cards. We have no eggs. Thank you so much, uh, Christopher. Mm -hmm. Uncountable? Uncountable. Quantifier with a countable of nouns. I don't have much rice. I has much money. How much does this cost? There is much work to do. I have a little rice. Do you have a little salt? I want a little flour. I wish I had a little bread. Thank you. Okay, okay. so as you notice, the quantifiers are the words in bold. I want all the apples, all, every, most, many, some, a few, any, and no. Okay, these are the ones used with countable nouns. And with uncountable nouns, we have much, 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 much. A little, a little, a little, and a little. <laughs> okay, so we have much and a little. Uh, I want all the apples. Quiero todas las manzanas. Can I have every bowl? Puedo tener cada bola, cada pelota, cada, every. Who has the most pens? ¿Quién tiene la mayoría de los lapiceros? I don't have many pens. No tengo muchos lapiceros. I have some pens. Tengo algunos lapiceros. I have a few coins. Tengo unas pocas monedas. I don't have any cards. No tengo ninguna tarjeta. We have no eggs. No tenemos ni, ni un huevo. Ni un huevo. Okay, ningún huevo. Like people in the United States in this moment. And uncountable, I don't have much rice. No tengo mucho arroz. He has much money. Él tiene mucho dinero. How much does this cost? ¿Cuánto cuesta esto? There is much work to do. Tengo mucho trabajo que hacer. I have a little rice. Tengo un poco de arroz. Do you have a little salt? ¿Tienes un poco de sal? I want a little flour. Yo quiero un poco de harina. I wish I had a little brother. Desearía tener un hermano pequeño. Bueno, Emmanuel pregunta, some is countable? You can use some with countable and with uncountable. Y significa algo, algo o alguno. 
Yo podría decir, I have some eh, sugar. Or I have some time for you. Tengo algo de tiempo para ti. I have some time for you. Christopher? Do you have a question, Christopher? Yes, teacher. teacher. ¿Por qué se utiliza el has en vez de have? Where? Um, por ejemplo, he has much money. Oh. Who has the most pens? Okay. En el, porque es tercera persona. Singular. Ah, no, no, no. Ajá. Entonces, en, en el caso del verbo have, cambia. Este no se le agrega la S, sino que cambia completo a has. He has, she has, it has. Y en este caso, porque quién es también, estamos preguntando una tercera persona singular. ¿Quién tiene? Who has the most pens? Okay. okay. Thank you, teacher. You're welcome, Christopher. So let's look at the next slide, the next chart. Aquí en este teacher, cuadrito van a poder entender un poco mejor. En este cuadrito tenemos tenemos the quantifier, the meaning, and if it's countable or non-countable. Little solo se usa con uncountable y significa Pequeño, poco, few, small, slight, y se usa con canto. A lot of, se lo podemos usar con ambos, y significa un montón, a large number of something. Many means mucho, o muchos, muchos, very numerous, y se usa con canto. Many people, many students, many tomatoes, many eggs, many hours. Much significa mucho y solo se usa con uncountable. Any se puede usar para ambas. Significa nada o nunca, para nada. Y también en preguntas o en negativo. I don't have any children. No tengo ningún hijo. Lots of significa a lot of. Es lo mismo, a lot of. Significa montón de o montones de. Y se puede usar con ambas. Some eh, quiere decir un, eh, una cantidad no específica. Solo algo o algún. Y se puede usar igual con ambos. Countable and uncountable. ¿Tienen alguna pregunta con respecto a estos? Si no... Sí. Yeah. ¿Verdad que también tienen como que un cierto porcentaje para utilizarlos? Vaya, eso vamos a ver ahorita. Vaya, en este, que es lo que está en la plataforma, tenemos más quantifiers, more quantifiers. Tenemos otros. Por ejemplo, all, nearly all, most, many, a lot of, some, not many, a few, few, and no one. All quiere decir todos. Entonces, 100%. Nearly all, casi todos. Most, la mayoría. Por eso están bien arriba. 90%, 85%. Many quiere decir muchos o muchas. Y ahí tenemos a lot of. Some, no many, a few, bueno, many, muchos, a lot of, que significa un montón. Some, algunos, not many, no muchos, a few, unos pocos, few, pocos, y no one, nadie, nadie. Entonces aquí tenemos, por ejemplo, all families have only one child. Todas las familias tienen... Solo un hijo. Nearly all families have only one child. Casi todas las familias tienen solo un hijo. Most families have only one child. La mayoría de las familias tienen solo un hijo. Si ¿Sí ven cómo cambia un poquito, vean el significado. Todos a casi todos y la mayoría. Many, many families are smaller these days. Muchas familias son más pequeñas ahora. A lot of families are smaller these days. 
un montón de familias son más pequeñas. ¿no? Some families are smaller these days. Algunas familias son más pequeñas. Not many couples have more than one child. No muchas parejas tienen más de un hijo. A few couples have more than one child. Unas pocas parejas tienen más de un hijo. Few couples have more than one child. Pocas parejas tienen más de un hijo. No one gets married before the age of 18. Nadie se casa antes de la edad de 18. Si se fijan, la mayoría de estos son para, los utilizamos para contables, contables, families, families, couples, que se pueden contar, vea, one family, two families, three families, four families, couples también se pueden contar, one couple, two couples, three couples, las parejas. Pero en el number zero, no one, si se fijan, utilizamos get. El verbo lleva una S. ¿Por qué? Porque no one es solamente uno. Los demás sí son más, ¿verdad? Más de uno. Pero no one se refiere solamente al 0%. A nadie, a nadie. Entonces el verbo va a llevar una S. No one gets married before the age of 18. Vamos a practicar si podemos eh, usar los quantifiers. Uh, in this exercise, you can see some sentences. You are going to change or replace the percentage with a quantifier. I will make the first example. Voy a hacer el primer ejemplo para que ustedes puedan hacer lo siguiente. In China, 50% of women get married by the age of 22. Entonces yo en vez de decir 50%, voy a decir, in China, most, uh, many, many women get married by the age of 22. This is a new one. In, in China, many women get married before by the age of 22. See, ¿Sí? entonces cambié el porcentaje, el 50% por many. Vaya, veamos si podemos hacer los siguientes ejercicios. Si no, nos ayudamos unos con otros. You can tell me the answer in the chat or you can turn on your audio, your mic. Okay? In Australia, 87% of married couples have children. In the United States, 0% of the people vote before the age of 18. 35% of the people in Germany live alone. 78% of American high school students have jobs. Necesitan esta tablita, miren, para poder escribir en los ejemplos. Necesitan esta tablita. Ya les voy a mandar una imagen. Para que ahí puedan ir viendo qué quantifier pueden utilizar a la hora de escribir la oración. Ya se me asusté por ahí. Vamos a hacer este ejercicio. A ver cómo estamos. Pueden compartir sus oraciones. Bueno, recuerden, lo que va a hacer es reemplazar el porcentaje 
por un quantifier. In Australia, mm -hmm. some married couples have children. Okay, which quantifier? Mm -hmm. Some. Ah, vale. Pero si es el 87%. Ah, a little. Entonces. It's nearly, ah, most, most. Uh, Ajá, usted usa yes. uno de estos porque es 87% es bastante. Many, many, lot of, ah, oh, yeah. Ah, entonces vean la tablita y de acuerdo al porcentaje van a escribir, van a hacer la oración. Pero va bien, G. La estructura está excelente. Ahí escribió Jacqueline. Australia, a few co married couples have children. Bueno, ahí igual Jacqueline Rebeca es el quantifier. ¿Cómo es? ¿80%? No one. Ah, no one. Tiene que ser un poquito más. In Australia, most, okay, Fernando, in Australia, most married couples have children. Excellent. Now, in the uh, number three, in the United States, 0% of the people vote before 18. In this case, you will use no one. Mm -hmm. no one. In the United States, no one. Y al verbo le vamos a agregar la e. In the number three, in the United States, no one. Okay, Christopher, in Australia, nearly all of married couples have children. Mm -hmm, that's right. In the United States, no one of the people vote before the age of 18. Bueno, en este caso, in the United States, pueden decir, no one votes. No necesitan poner of the people, solo es no one. Y ahí ya está refiriéndose a una persona. No one. No one votes. Y como es no one, le pongo la S al verbo en tercera persona singular. No one votes. No one votes before the age of 18. Excellent, Eli. Mm -hmm. What about the number four? Rebeca no tiene que ponerle apóstrofe. No lleva apóstrofe S. El verbo, como es tercera persona singular, El verbo lleva la S. Pero no, no se preocupe que así aprendemos todos. No one, no one votes. Fernando, el verbo va a llevar la S porque es tercera persona. Ok, veamos. 35% of the people in Germany live alone. Eso? Some people in Germany live alone. Ok. Yeah, some people. It's ok. 35%. Some of people. Okay, and number five, 78% of American high school students have jobs. 78%, 78, a lot.
Most American high school students have jobs. Okay, yes, you can say most American high school students. A lot of American high school students have jobs. I like that one. A lot of, a lot of American high school students. Very good. So I can see you can use the quantifiers. Ahora sí me gustaría que ustedes pudieran hacer sus propios ejemplos. Vale, yo les voy a poner el quantifier y ustedes me escriben ejemplos en el chat con ese quantifier. Voy a poner un ejemplo. All Salvadorian people or all Salvadorians eat pupusas on weekends. Ok, so... This is my example using all. All Salvadorian is pupusas on weekends. Another example, all of motorcycle drivers wears, all of, all of motorcycle drivers wear a reflective vest. Now, with the new regulations. <laughs> With the new regulations of the government, you have, if you are a motorcycle driver, you have to wear a reflective vest. Nearly all Salvadorian eat pupusas. In El Salvador, most people emigrate. Most people emigrate. Okay, good example, Eli. People no, no es plural, no lleva ese, no lleva ese. 100% of Salvador. Okay. 100% of Salvadorian eat pupusas on weekend. Or all Salvadorian eat pupusas on weekend. Jacqueline, vaya Jacqueline. Much solo se utiliza con los que no se contan, no se cuentan. En ese caso sería many. Many Salvadorian eat pupusas on weekend. Claudia, some Salvadorian eat pupusas. Okay. Vale, ahora otros ejemplos. Uh -huh. Usemos, por ejemplo, a lot of. We can say a lot of Salvadorians drink a lot of soda. A lot of Salvadorians drink a lot of soda. Many Salvadorians have a lot of children. <laughs> Many Salvadorians have children. Okay. Most of the Salvadorians have children. What about using no one? No one speaks. No one speaks Russian. For example, in El Salvador, they drink a lot of coffee. Okay, people drink a lot of coffee. It's true. Uh, in the afternoon, especially, no one eats pupusas with fork only. <laughs> but in ese ejemplo, Jimmy, sería no one eats. No one, no necesita poner Salvadoria. So no. no one eats. Pupusas with pork in El Salvador. A lot of friends go to the gym. Okay, you can say a lot of my friends. Maybe Claudia, a lot of my friends go to the gym. Okay. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Most people go to the mall, okay. On weekends, especially, a lot of my friends go to the gym. Yes. More examples? In El Salvador, a lot of in El Salvador, a lot of people drink coffee or drink a lot of coffee. Any girl likes to practice boxing? Mm 
pero, ok. Any se utiliza más in negative sentences and in questions. Not many people speak speak Korean. Bueno, con people, como es, significa personas. Es plural, pero no lleva la S. El verbo no lleva una S porque es, es tercera persona plural. No many people speak Korean, ¿ok? No one... <ríe> ok, Christopher. No, necesaria, no, no tiene que escribir people, Christopher, solo no one. No one eats white beans at night. <ríe> Because they are very explosive. <ríe> So no one eats white beans at night. <laughs> a lot of Mexicans like a lot of Mexicans like tequila and also chili peppers. I have a lot of work. Oh, Jennifer. Very nice. Good example. Good example. Well, people, we have no one white beans at night. No, no one eats. No one eats white beans at night. <laughs> okay. Well, guys, it's time to take the last attendance. I'm so happy that you were participating in the class. Can you tell me what did you learn today? Give me one example. <laughs> That's my crazy cat. <laughs> And now she's very famous. Uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Anna. She's my baby. My baby cat. Look! <laughs> She's getting out by the window. <laughs> uh, do you have any pets? Yes, I do. I have one cat. So, what did you learn in this class? Aprendimos algo o no aprendimos? A ver, Claudia. <risa> a, a cómo medir, o sea, cómo medir, cómo pronunciar las medidas en cada eh, oración. Sí, yes, sí, yes, yeah, it's important. <risa> the quantifiers, the express a quantity. Ok, so I'm going to take the last attendance. Alejandro Jovel, Ana Elizabeth García. Present. Andrea Sánchez, eh, Betania López, Braulio Heriberto, Carlos Alberto, Present teacher. Claudia María García, Present teacher. Laura Yesenia Ébora, eh, Christopher Raúl Peña, I'm here, teacher. Damaris Isabel Castellanos. Present teacher. Denise Elisea Gutiérrez. Um, Doribel Arelí. Eli Antonio. Present. Emmanuel Portales. Present. Thank you. Eneida Verónica. Present. Eric Daniel Herrera. Fernando Mendoza. Irma Segura. Presente. Irma. Irma Zuleima. Present. Ok. Jacqueline. <ríe> The cat disappeared. <ríe> Jacqueline Cermeño. Present. Eh, uh, Janet Rivas. Present. Jennifer Iraeta. Jennifer. Present teacher. Ok, Jessica. Present teacher. Ok, Jessica. Jimmy Ramos. Ok, that was it. Present. That's it. Thank you so much, guys, for, for coming to the class, for connecting to the class. It was a pleasure to see you, and I see you on Thursday.
Tomorrow we don't have that. Tomorrow is Wednesday. You can go to the movies with your husband, with your wife, with your girlfriend, with your boyfriend, with your friends, right? You can go to the cinema <laughs> or sleep early because we don't have class tomorrow. We have class until Thursday. Tenemos clase mañana no hasta el jueves. Okay? See you Thursday. Bye. 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 Bye.